right because Emmanuel Arsenal survived contact with the ground with his feet when he came down for a couple of steps. That ball just rolled out of bounds. An illegal kick called by former CFLer Dave Donaldson out in the corner. Lions had 99 yards of offense in the first half. They put up 80 on the opening drive of the second off. half. Out of bounds, BC. First down Edmonton on the 45 yard line. Eskimos fortunate that that ball did just have enough momentum to roll out. Otherwise, they might have been pinned here off that kickoff. Instead, Riley will try to respond after that impressive drive by Lule. Riley's turn, and the Eskimos start at their 45. Pass is caught by Isaiah Sweeney, the speedster. Unable to turn it up, and he gets bounced out by the corner, Cord Parks. Chris, when the BC Lions, and this is just doing a little video study, when the BC Lions play their four-man front or a 40 defense, they'll play Karan Williams this year in the interior of that defensive line. And you see him, there's one, two, three, four. Karan was number one on the interior. That's a 40 front or four down linemen, and they go to a 30 front, they move Karan Williams to the outside. He just got his first sack on a broken play in the very first quarter. In fact, it was early on first drive. He's trying to figure out playing both spots. Second and eight. Far side and incomplete. And I charted uh, with Karan, sorry Chris, I charted what they did last week against the Toronto Argonauts and I saw in the 40 front 23 times they ran that 40 defense with four down linemen 20 times he'd lined up at defensive tackle now when they go to the 30 front 22 times they ran that defense so almost 50 50 with the two defensive looks and Karan Williams was at the end position or rush in as Paul LaPolice described at halftime talked about those different positions so they're moving Karan Williams around a little bit of course he led the league in sacks last year started as a defensive tackle there's Williams having trouble with it picks it up back at his 15 and he'll get wrestled down there by Cornell Capacotti on the scene of Curran Karan Williams and the Lions have the lead here last punt return it's working on Nick Iraq you're gonna see Josh, Jesse, to the to the right of your screen right there, just go up to the neck of Kyle Jones. Eighth rough play call against the most penalized yeah, team. This has been a problem for Edmonton and the most penalized team in, in the league after two weeks, and special teams was an issue. 12 special teams penalties after two weeks. Gives Lule some breathing room at the 35-yard line. Andrew Harris inside. And a second effort surge up to the 40 for five. Next next closest team after two weeks, Chris, was Winnipeg at eight penalties. So, you know, that's a lot of yardage. When you're averaging 100, over 100 yards in penalties a game, think of the length of the football field and the Edmonton Eskimos at 113.5 after two weeks. A little more breathing room for the BC offense. Eskimos 15 penalties, 137 yards last week. Second and five, not available, so Lule rolling up, now downfield, and ball is incomplete, and a late hit on Lule, another flag down, and J.C. Sherrod pleading innocence, but it will extend the Lions' possession. Question on this play is... Major foul, roughing a passer. Edmonton, 47. 15 yards, automatic first down. Now, whether you're a BC fan or, or an Edmonton fan, you watch this play, try and be objective, <laughs> and, and just decide, does, does J.C. Sherrod have a chance to veer off of that hit and leave Lule alone because the ball was thrown? That's the question you have to ask, and if the answer is yes, he could have, then the flag has to come out. Whether it's just a push or you knock him down, I think he could have veered off. So a lot of real estate via penalty. Lule 
scrambling again, flushed from the pocket by Laurent, and takes off, and gets across the 50-yard line, and he gets seven more on the ground as Corey Banks chirps the Eskimo defense. I was going to say, Chris, you know, receivers kind of hate to do it. I'm just going to say it out loud. They, they hate the downfield block, and they'll do it, and there's some better than others. Nick Lewis is the best in the business at it. And I, well, I, you know what? I, I stand corrected. He does like he to do it. it. He, he, he does like to do it. Our guy, Jock Climbing, I know didn't like to do it. But they're doing a lot of it in this game. There was another block downfield to spring Lule on that last run for a couple more yards. The effective night for Lule carrying the football. Now Harris ahead. He gets driven back. Looked like forward progress was enough to move the chains. To be in, you know, a an overall great receiver, that's got to be part of it. And Tommaso Munoz on the play before was blocked. I believe it was Nick Moore downfield. Number one, it takes a hit from a linebacker off your quarterback. Number two, it gets you a couple more yards on first down, and they end up converting from that Andrew Harris run. So well, those receivers in conditions like this have to kind of put the headlines in the newspaper aside and go out and get their nose dirty a little bit. Lule has outrushed Harris 68-45 in this uh, reverse here, and it's Iannuzzi around the corner, and he'll get another first down run. And Lule with a cut block and then celebrates with his teammates on the sideline. And I just had a Matt Dunnigan flashback at that very <laughs> moment. That, that play took took a little bit of time to develop, and it gave Lule a chance to get out there. And he watched the quarterback come out. He's going to cut block. Brandon gets a Lang. nice one. Brandon Lang. Now watch him go over there. He goes to the bench. And yeah, baby. How about that block? <laughs> well, he just ignited the Lion bench. They have a first down, a 12-yard run for Iannucci. His second carry of the game. And Lule will take off again. Travis Lule gets down. And he'll slide at the what a yard away from another first down. You talk to any one of the Lions teammates of Travis Lule. He's got 78 yards rushing in this game already. You saw the celebration on the sideline. That's what these guys love to rally around. That's why they love this Travis Lule as their starter. Because he'll find a way. If he can't get the ball down the field, if he can't get it to the receivers, for whatever reasons, he'll run it. He'll take those hits. He'll throw a block. Got the sideline pumped up. He's got his huddle pumped up. He's got the ball moving down the field. He's got me pumped up. <laughs> Big second half. He's adjusted to the conditions. Second and short. Back to Harris. First down. But you don't think the offensive linemen see that and they turn around and they, they look at each other. Like, when they see that big block, you'll see Matt Norman turn around, look at Patrick Cabongo and say, you see what our guy did there? Our guy just put it on the line for us. Let's, let's get him some time. Let's, let's get out here and, and get after it. That's what leaders do. Got them on the move, and now it's first down at oh, the end of the like 17. It. But there was a coach, I think it was Mike Benavides, halfway down the field trying to call time a timeout. BC. was aligned up that it wasn't going to work or they have wrong personnel out? Yeah, it must have been the personnel because head coach Mike Benavides saw something and he sprinted to the official's attention at about the 20-yard line and got that timeout called. So they've rebooted. And already first and ten at the Edmonton 17. Two backs, love it. Roy Lombala in the backfield. 
He releases, so does Harris, and he's got it. Andrew Harris breaks the tackle. Touchdown. Kavis Reed said Andrew Harris is our Achilles heel, especially in the score zone, and that continues tonight. Two backs in the backfield. Don't see much of that anymore in the Canadian Football League. That's where it starts. You're right. Both backs release. Roley Lombala out one way. Andrew Harris out the other. They kind of crisscross in the backfield. But I love the second effort. Lowers his pad level. Takes the hit. Absorbs that one and bounces outside. T.J. Hill. Joe Burnett couldn't bring him down. Harris hits pay dirt. And the Lions look very impressive in this second half. As they open up a 15-3 lead, 17-yard touchdown, second of the year for Andrew Harris. Eight plays, 75 yards, a 17-yard touchdown. Catch for Andrew Harris as the Lions march the field in their opening two possessions of the second half. And yeah, just off the leadership of their quarterback, Travis Lule, who now has 78 yards rushing and fighting away getting his bench fired up getting his huddle fired up and then you saw the second effort comes from that from Andrew Harris here's Hugh Charles on the return cuts back and is finally taken down by Emmanuel Arsenault so the Eskimos have some catching up to do with under four minutes to go third quarter I stayed one time. We stayed another time. And now we're eating free. At Choice Hotels, two stays pays. Right now, when you take two separate trips, you can earn a free $50 gift card for dining, shopping, or gas. Book now at choicehotels.com. During the plumbing, cooling, and electrical expert sale, tap into great savings on top quality products at home hardware and building center locations. Enter online for your chance to win. Homeowners helping homeowners. With expert advice. You better hurry up. We don't want to be late. <coughs> what the heck did you just do? Let your man out. Brood, the essence of man. I love these new pizzas from Pizza Hut. Like poutine. And chicken club. Then there's Asian barbecue. And creamy butter chicken. Plus maple bacon. Five new exciting flavors only at Pizza Hut. Our sack tally brought to you by Purelator, tackling Hunter across Canada. Check. Big Blue night, yes. yeah, big night for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. In fact, I think both teams in that game, and Winnipeg and Hamilton, uh, a big sack game. I think it was six or seven for the Bombers in that one. And take a look at the BC Lions down at the bottom of that list. That's some place they're just not familiar with, down to be at the bottom of a sack leaders list. Ron Williams just got his first of the season early in this game. Mike Riley hands it off. And here's John White, his first carry of the game. He had a 69-yarder against the Lions in the preseason that probably sealed his position with the Eskimos and Edmonton trying to change things up here. Double team for Ron Williams, try and get him out of that hole and then just send White right up in there behind it. As he plays inside because the Lions now in that 40 defense with four defensive linemen on the on the field. 10 for White in the first down. Now a pitch to him. Spins off the first contact and down he goes. Julius Williams broke through and Green Smith drops. John White for a loss. Well, one of the reasons that Karan Williams and, and the coaching staff, Mike Benavides, told me that they'll put him inside is because they got now Julius Williams, the former Edmonton Eskimo, number 55, who's going to make this play unblocked in the backfield and, and hustle to turn it back inside to his teammate, Kareem Smith. But they feel Karan Williams can play just as well inside like he did in Montreal. They go to this 30 now, and they'll bump him up. So a loss of nine. Second and 19. Riley will take off. Eric Taylor in pursuit. Corey Banks made contact and 
lunging, trying to get extra yards was Riley, but they're going to mark him out at the 53 of Edmonton. Well short of the first down. I'll just wrap up this thought here with Karan, Karan Williams and interesting on Mike Riley there as well. But here's your 30 front with three defensive linemen. And now, where is Karan Williams? He gets pushed out to defensive end. So they're going to try and work with this. Karan Williams has had to, you know, be a team guy here. He was the leader in sack department last year just as a defensive end all game or all season long. Move inside, he's got to take some more hits in there. A little different for him, but he'll do it for the better good of the team. Shaw, Shaw rolling a little bit, as we've seen a couple of times this year, and then booms the kick down around the 10, and Williams gets tripped up. Mike Miller, the native of Riverview, New Brunswick, down in a hurry to make the tackle. One of the models for Mike Benavides' team this year has been to check your ego at the door. They take this and travel this sign on the road with them. And they'll put it in their locker room, wherever they are, it's at home as well. And Deron Williams took it to heart, as, as do the entire, the entire team. And that means that if you're asked to do something that you have to relearn in Deron Williams' position to get back inside, learn that again, you'll do it if the coaches feel it's best for the team. Lions start back at their 15. And a big game here by the fullback. Oh, the fullback here, Roly Lombala rumbling. And you don't see that very often. Six carries last year for 32 yards for Roly Lombala. He just turned up 29. Uh, and, and a good kick out block from De Devon Olafioye. And yeah, he did just rumble. It almost looked like guys were just falling off of him. 6-2, First down up at the 43. And Lulay steps up, shovels it across, and it's an illegal pass. It was not a lateral, I don't believe. The flags fly immediately as Lulay was across the line of scrimmage. Yes, he was, and it was forward, so this will be coming back. By the way, that Roly Lombala run, 29 yards, the longest of his career, and this play will come back. Illegal forward pass, BC. 10-yard penalty, remains first down. I wondered if there was a mix-up in the backfield, uh, Blue Lake from the get-go here. Let's find out. Take a look. You see the line of scrimmage is two yards shy of the 45 so you hit the 43 yard line he spins out of that doesn't see anything to the field now stop it there right now boom boom that's forward pass Lule, a career high 78 yards rushing looks one way and now harris on the other side and not going anywhere damaso muñoz there again <laughs> off here as we've got time for one more play in the third quarter and it's second and a whole bunch after the penalty and then that play by Munoz and this is where if you're a BC Lion offensively you want to just manage this situation second and 23 four receivers for this wide side Lule going the other way, he's got Arsenal! And it's a first down, they convert with a shot to Arsenal. An impressive third quarter offensively for the BC Lions. A couple of touchdown marches, and it ends with a 41-yard strike from Lule to Arsenal. talked a lot about the rain being a factor in the low offensive stats, but the BC Lions kind of takes that excuse away, don't they? Well, Travis Lule has found a way, and the way has been to run the football. He's got a career high in rushing, and 
it's really inspired the entire team and I said in that second in real long situation that that's the one you want to almost manage and the other option is to go deep to Manuel Arsenal and convert and that could be the play that really breaks the back of the Edmonton Eskimos when you take a look at it looked like Donovan Alexander didn't get outside in that zone defense looked like they were three deep and two guys just too close to the middle of the football field left Emmanuel Arsenal open down the, down the rail. So he's got a career high in rushing with 78 yards. He's hit Arsenal and Harris for touchdown passes in the second half. He ends the third quarter with a 41-yard shot to Arsenal. That was Lule's on fire here. And they start the fourth quarter, first down at the Edmonton 39. There's Harris trying to get outside. J.C. Sherrick won't let him turn it up field. Well, that, that's a big, big play to Arsenal, though, to get second in that much. I, I just want to show you Donovan Alexander. Now, this isn't, you know, I wasn't in the huddle to hear the call, but when you take a look at, at the three deep, stop it there, guys. You got one, two, three deep players, and they've got to split that field into third like this. If Donovan Alexander doesn't widen the knob, it leaves... Emmanuel Arsenal open down the sideline. That's a big, big play in second and a whole bunch. The Edmonton Eskimos would have got good field position in the punt there. And I, you know, I hate to put it on him. Maybe the corner is supposed to drop deep there and be the third player. But it looked like he could have come over and helped if he was a little bit wide. Another second and long situation. for Nick Moore off his fingertips and it will fall over the head of Alexander and incomplete. They aren't able to get points out of that big play in that second down conversion, but they do flop the field and a punt here for the BC Lions into the corner and, and they get their defense in a pretty good position. So now O'Neill the punt to Joe Burnett. And Bur Burnett back at the six yard line and Anton McKenzie was down in a hurry. Another tackle made by Matt McGarva. 